Hey guys, so Adam's car is still here. He wasn't able to come down and get it at the end of the week like he wanted to. He got too busy at work, so he's going to send a shipper to pick it up. Maybe even before the weekend is up, they could get here and get it. But I thought, well, while it's here, I'm going to go ahead and piddle with some of this small stuff so it's just less he's got to worry about when it gets there. So the first thing I did was fix this um, turn signal indicator that I told you guys wasn't working. So now we got both of those. It was not the bulb. It was the socket. The socket, and then, you know, a lot of times you think it's the, and well, a lot of times it is the, the mesh on the back of the cluster. It's not making a connection, but that's not what it was. Like, I could even wiggle the bulb and I couldn't get it to come on in the socket even hooked up to a battery. So I just grabbed another socket with the new bulb and everything and put it in there and now it works fine. And this thing, a viewer spoke up and said he didn't think that those were real screws not to turn on them, which I wouldn't have done anyway without checking. But, you know, if you remember right, we've got the manual here and... I looked it up and see it is screws. So it's number nine. Look over here, number nine, screw. So that's all it was, was six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they're torque screws and this thing just fell down no clips it just came right out and the cluster wasn't real easy to get out i did have to take this panel off the bottom and just pull enough speedometer cable through without having to undo it just to get it to come back enough to be able to get my hand behind there to get the bulb twisted out but it really wasn't that bad and then i also noticed that you know anytime you turn the lights on with the door open or the keys in the ignition there's no chime and i'm like you know at the very least chevy had that e that drove you freaking crazy so i'm like there's got to be a chime and let me see is it this one? yeah i looked up the Warning and alarms, light on, ignition key, seat belt, warning chime. And looked at the fuses, it wasn't the fuses. So it told me it was a uh, convenience center. And then here it tells you component location, convenience center below instrument panel near left hand, sh left -hand shroud. Page 2017B. So, where was that? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you guys. It showed me exactly where it was. So, I've left this panel off. And I'm going to head. This is the chime right here. And you get down there really close to it, you can hear it really faint. And it goes right up here. Let me see if I can get on it. You've got your turn signal flasher and your emergency flasher here. And then it plugs in right up here above it. And I'm going to leave it out so Adam can compare it. There's one on eBay that says it's for a Camaro and a Firebird that really, I mean, it's got the exact same pins seven pin and instead of having the like the speaker grill here it's, it's got it on this side but i have a feeling it'll plug right in and work just fine so i'm going to leave that out put it in the glove box and send adam the link to that ebay auction or buy it now whatever it was but i'm pretty sure it'll work and then i went ahead and glued as we talked about in the last video these were down here in this little storage pocket I had actually had AutoZone bring out some Gorilla Glue and it wouldn't touch it. It would just, it wouldn't even begin to try to attach this little aluminum 
knob to this. So I wiped them down again and I used Permatex black gasket maker on the headlight one and on the lighter. And here we put this ashtray door back on with the same stuff. I don't know why in that last video I kept calling the lighter the ashtray, but anyway, all that stuff's glued back on. And then when I was sitting here holding this on here with my thumbs, I realized this thing here is extremely sticky, like those old GM steering wheels used to get in the summertime. You just get sticky stuff all over your hands. Of course, this steering wheel is leather, and it's like brand new. That's not going to happen, but... I don't know if you remember those old GM steering call or steering wheels that would get so sticky you'd get it all over your hands. Well, that's exactly what this thing right here is doing. It's bleeding out sticky stuff all over. So anyway, I got that stuff back on, and then I wanted to look into this power antenna thing, and I did get the power antenna straightened up. It's straight as an arrow now. Um, where is that? Well, I was looking at that wiring diagram. I lost that page, but it doesn't matter. I looked at the wiring diagram, and so, of course, I checked the fuses because it's not making any noise whatsoever. So I want to show you guys what I found. Got this little access panel down here. Behind the front wheel, it just got a couple of clips and some seven, seven millimeter screws. So I got in here to see if they had unplugged it or something. And instead of doing that, they cut that green wire and taped off both ends of it. So I'm sure that the motor was running and wouldn't stop, which that was the dumbest thing that anybody could do. But maybe we'll get that fixed when I'm up there in Detroit this summer. But it'd be a lot easier if we get this wheel off and have it up in the air or something to get this the rest of the way off. This goes up here further than I thought. But anyway, that's that's what somebody did to quiet down the antenna is just snip a wire. So stupid. And I'm sure all it needs is a mass. And it's really easy to get out. There's a, according to the manual, there's a, a Phillips screw right back here behind the antenna to get this little chrome piece off. It, it lifts up, and then there's a couple screws behind there that comes out, and then a couple 10 millimeters to take the antenna out. And I don't think putting a mass in it is too awful bad. So Adam might get that and have it ready when I'm up there this summer. So I also went ahead and got that horrible white looking stuff that the windshield washer smeared all over the window i got that wiped off so just wanted to get those little things done before it gets back to adam just all he's got to worry about now is the getting a set of tires on it and figuring out that miss and then i'm sure he'll detail the crap out of it but it rained here again today and hailed we even got hail so i'm glad this car was inside but anyway, I just wanted to give you a little update on the Cimarron. Little things I did. Oh, I vacuumed it out too. Remember, it was full of rocks and grass. So now everything on the car works except the power antenna and the door warning chime. So I think Adam can get that stuff and I can throw it in when I'm back up there. So anyway... I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. I'd really appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. And stay tuned. I've got a friend that I'm going to be talking to really soon that's got some cars. And he's got this really cool 58 Chevy Impala with the factory air ride. So we're going to talk about that car for sure. So stay tuned. I really appreciate it.